Welcome to the first part of the module on Java concurrency mechanisms. In this part, we present an overview of the Java mechanisms available in Android to implement concurrent software via multi-threading. Android supports many standard Java concurrency and synchronization mechanisms. We cover Java threads in the first several parts of this module, and then cover some core Java synchronization mechanisms in later parts. If you're already familiar with Java threading, you can skim through this video or skip it altogether. There are several ways to understand Java threads. First, there's a conceptual view, where Java threads are units of computation that could run simultaneously within a process, which is ultimately a Linux process on Android. These threads can communicate with each other via shared objects or message passing. Second, there's an implementation view, where each Java thread has a stack, a program counter, and other registers, which comprise state that's unique to each thread, as well as a heap and static areas, which comprise state that's shared by all threads within a process. Now that I've given a brief overview of Java threads, let's show how to program threads in Android. All Java threads must be given some code to run, which is typically done in one of two ways. One way is to extend the thread class and override its run hook method, as shown in the code snippet on this slide, where my thread inherits some thread and defines a run method that's invoked automatically when my thread is started. Another way is to implement the runnable interface and override its run hook method. There are several ways to implement the runnable interface. The approach shown on this slide defines a named runnable implementation, passes it to an anonymous thread object, and then calls its start method, which instructs the Java virtual machine to create the resources needed to run the thread and invoke its run hook method. Alternatively, the approach shown on this slide defines and starts a thread using an anonymous inner class as the runnable, which is a common idiom used throughout Android. The link shown at the bottom of this slide compares and contrasts these various approaches. Regardless of how a thread is created, the Java virtual machine, known as Dalvik on Android, creates the thread resources and invokes its run hook method when another thread calls start on the thread instance. That run method can execute concurrently with respect to other computations and other threads. It can call blocking I.O. operations on network connections and files, receive messages from a looper and process them, etc. You can generally run any code in a thread, though Android restricts GUI operations to the user interface thread. A thread can execute as long as its run hook method hasn't returned, though the Android Linux thread scheduler can transparently suspend and resume many times throughout its life cycle. If a thread needs to run forever, it requires some sort of infinite loop that prevents run from returning. After the run hook method returns, the thread's no longer active and various things can happen. For example, Another thread may have called the thread's join method to wait for it to complete, or the thread could simply evaporate. The Java virtual machine, machine reclaims and recycles the thread's resources once it's complete, while allowing other threads in the program to continue running. The Java thread class has dozens of methods that are documented in the URL at the bottom of this slide. We've covered some of the most important methods already. For example, the start method initiates thread execution, join waits for a thread to finish, and run is a hook method that runs user code. Some other methods commonly used in Android software and shown later in this MOOC include sleep, which causes a thread to sleep for a given period of time, interrupt, which posts an interrupt request to a thread indicating it should shut itself down, and current thread, which returns the thread object associated with the currently executing thread of control. In summary, some concurrency mechanisms supported by Android are based on standard Java thread classes which provides a programming model that's familiar to many developers. The link at the bottom of this slide points to a tutorial on the concurrency support provided by the Java programming language and its class libraries. Android also supports powerful concurrency mechanisms from the Java util concurrent package. For example, its thread pool executor and future are used in various parts of the Android middleware itself. The link at the bottom of this slide points to documentation on Android's Java util concurrent package. Writing Android programs using Java threads has drawbacks, however, since it's subtly different than writing multi-threaded programs on a desktop or server. For example, Android doesn't allow background Java threads to access the display, but instead requires them to post runnables or messages to the user interface threads looper. In practice, therefore, many Android applications use the idiomatic concurrency frameworks that are described in the link at the bottom of this slide and covered in the next module in this section.